Yeah, since I last saw you, the Chinese have sanctioned me. The Iranians don't think so much of me either. But, but I, I'm proud of our fight, and I'm proud of our accomplishments, and that we have truly upended the status quo. Hey. Mr. Secretary, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. Whoops, they got me taped in yeah. here. So. Yeah, <laughs> Rip the microphone <laughs> out. Yep. Okay, and we'll start whenever you guys are ready over here. All right, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, sir, really want to thank you for joining us here at CPAC down in Orlando, Florida. It's great to be with you, Matt. A lot of exciting things happening here at this CPAC. This is also a tough time for the conservative movement and the Republican Party. Uh, it's the first CPAC after the Democrats have now taken complete control in Washington, D.C. Uh, they've got the House, they've got the Senate, and they took the White House in November. What do we need to do as a conservative movement, as a Republican Party, moving forward to kind of learn from the lessons of what happened last year and move forward into the uh, midterm elections and eventually the 2024 elections. Well, Matt, the mistake that the liberals want us to make is they want us to move away from our ideas <laughs> and our principles, the things that generated so much good these past four years. We can't do that. We've got to stay the course. We've got to continue to press. I'm mindful I, I, was, a, I was a congressman. We, we won seats all across America. We have a bigger number in the House of Representatives. But I'm also candid, this, this four years is going to test us. We've got to be successful in 2022. We've got to win elections all across America, take away at least one job from Nancy Pelosi, and then stay true to our principles, stay in the fight, continue to put America first at the forefront of everything that we do. And when we do that, we'll prevail. So we're going to hear from President Trump on, uh, to, uh, this weekend here. He's going to speak tomorrow afternoon. Um, it's the first time he's spoken publicly since he's left office. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking to hear from him? Are we expecting a 2024 announcement from him? Uh, uh, what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts on what to look for from the president? Look, I've spent a lot of time with President Trump these past four years, first as a CIA director and then as a Secretary of State. Uh, I expect what you'll hear tomorrow is a... Uh, is a recitation of the good that our team did with his leadership. He'll, he'll talk about why it worked. He'll talk about the people in America that we care so deeply about. He'll remind all of us that 70 plus million people continue to support the ideas that we put forward for these four years. And so I think you'll hear an awful lot about that. As for what he'll say about his future, I'll look forward to hearing that just along, everybody, along with everybody else. Okay, so now if he does decide to run in 2024, I think everybody, even Mitt Romney, says that he will be the <laughs> Republican nominee. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. He doesn't run. What are people looking for in a presidential candidate uh, on the Republican side here? I think people are looking for a fighter, if you kind of listen to the yeah. folks around CPAC. I think that's right. It, it's what I saw when I ran for Congress first, uh, first time in the big Tea Party class of 2010. They want someone who hasn't fallen in love with the city of Washington and all that comes with it. They want someone who's willing to break glass when that's what's required. They want someone who understands that uh, this is a, a righteous founding of our nation and that America is the greatest nation in the history of civilization and we have a duty to continue to preserve that. And they're looking for someone who's willing to lay it all on the line to go do that and to take the brick brats, to take whatever may come his or her way and demonstrate leadership in spite of any resistance they may receive. I think, the, I think the next set of leaders, not just whoever becomes the next president, but whether it's members of Congress, city council members, school board members, all across America have a responsibility to do that. Right? And if they do, the American people will respect that and they'll vote for them. How about you? Are you thinking about running? <laughs> you know, goodness knows, uh, I'm going to spend the next two years uh, trying to make sure that the House of Representatives doesn't remain in the thrall of Speaker Pelosi. Uh, I'm not leaving the fight. I care about these things. I've, uh, I've been so blessed. America's been so great to me that I'm not going to walk away from trying to make sure that America's just a little bit better and a little bit more secure every day. Speaking of which, during your time as Secretary of State, I mean, we saw, and uh, in, in during the Trump administration, uh, and before that is your time as Sec uh, CIA Director, uh, we, we saw this real shift that we haven't seen in Washington, D.C., where uh, the United States actually focused on the threat of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, this is an issue we've talked about quite a bit. Uh, can you tell us about that and where do we stand on that now? Because we've seen President Biden now take a number of actions to uh, cozy up to the CCP. He's undone a lot of the uh, executive actions that President Trump had in place. Uh, tell us about where do we stand on that. Walk us through what you guys did, uh, why it was different, and where do things stand now? Well, Matt, you and I have a chance to talk about this. We, we talked about it because it really matters to America. The single greatest threat to uh, my kids and everyone's children and grandchildren 
is the threat that Xi Jinping and his communist uh, uh, fellow travelers will continue in the way that they did for 40 years. This was bipartisan, Matt. The way they did for 40 years to run over the United States of America. It took uh, our leadership, it took our team to turn that tide and to recognize this threat and to confront it. And when we did, we made real progress. And so to your point, I, I do worry. I worry when I hear President Biden just say, well, this are just differences in norms. These aren't differences in norms. The Chinese Communist Party wants to undermine our democracy. They want to challenge the very way that America exists today. They are intent on doing that, and every leader has the responsibility to confront that every place we find it. We've talked about this many times. The Chinese Communist Party is engaged in uh, a series to do exactly what you're talking about there. They're engaged in some very underhanded tactics, whether it be their state-owned media and the propaganda that they, they push out there, whether it be uh, efforts to uh, influence our schools and universities uh, through things like the Confucius Institutes, whether it be efforts to influence Hollywood studios and the, pr mm. the, the, the uh, characters that end up in movies. They, would, they try to make sure there's no Chinese bad guys in the movies or anything like that. Uh, whether it be uh, uh, um, efforts to influence state and local governments. I know you did a lot of work on this as Secretary of State. Can you tell us about just how insidious the efforts are by the Chinese Communist Party to, uh, to try to achieve their goals? Yeah, they got a good run at this thing, the Chinese Communist Party did. And so they were able to infiltrate to our research institutions, our schools, in just exactly the way that you spoke about. Uh, but here's the good news. The good news is that America has an infinite capacity to push back against them. We're not a nation in decline. I'll give you a good example. They started pitching propaganda on the Wuhan virus, saying that it began here in the United States. We sprang to action immediately. We called them out, we presented the facts, we presented data. Every, everyone now understands that this virus came from China and then in fact, the Chinese leadership knew that it would have human to human spread and had real risk to the world and they covered it up. And this administration has a responsibility the same way that we did, is to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for the harm that they've wrought to the United States of America. Another big thing that you guys did was the, uh, these various peace deals uh, with Israel and uh, a number of different Arab countries. Uh, it really seems like uh, if you go around the um, the, the Middle East, uh, you look at it like a, a map of the Middle East, there's a real sh chance if you guys, uh, and we'll see if the Biden administration continues this, we haven't really seen much promising from them, but uh, when the next Republican president comes along and kind of finishes the work that you guys started, uh, there's a real chance for actual peace in the Middle East, thanks to the groundwork that you guys laid during the Trump administration. Yeah, it was good work, it was important work. It was historic work. I'm confident that this will actually continue, mm -hmm. but it will take an American administration that is prepared to confront Iran. Uh, you know, we talk about the Abraham Accords and then we talk about the enormous pressure we put on the Iranian regime. Those go hand in hand, they're connected. Uh, these Gulf states, these Arab states understood that the United States knew who the real bad guys were. The people who threatened America were largely coming from Iran. and We recognized that. And so when we pushed back, these countries were able to say, yep, it's fine, we can now recognize Israel. We can do business with Israel. We can have diplomatic relationships with Israel. We can have Israel as a security partner. And so whether it was the Bahrainis or the Emiratis or the Sudanese or whatever country that came to understand that Israel could in fact be a good partner for them in the region, we changed the course of history. And I, I think this genie's out of the bottle. I think nations will continue to see that this is the right thing for their people. And we will build on the Abraham Accords in important ways that will change the Middle East for an awfully long time. One of the things you guys had to fight during the Trump administration was this notion of a deep state, like a, a permanent class in Washington, a swamp, if you will. Uh, you talked about this in your CPAC speech here uh, about how uh, you guys were fighting the swamp. What are some of the things you learned uh, uh, in fighting that swamp, in fighting that deep state? What do you think we need to learn more moving forward? It is real that the people who come to occupy many of the positions that are just below political positions in Washington, D.C. have a worldview that was deeply different than the America First worldview that I spoke about in my speech here at CPAC today. Uh, and some of them, you know, they'll do the right thing and they'll respond to what the president and the secretary of state wanted, but others work to undermine it. That's unacceptable. Conservatives need to say, yes, I'm gonna go serve. I wanna go be part of that. I wanna go help an administration be successful at delivering America First policy, whether that's here at home or abroad. If we allow the left to occupy these positions and continue to work inside of our government to undermine an administration like the one that I was part of, we will always get less done, accomplish fewer things than we could have, and we'll never ultimately get these policies to stick when it comes time when the next administration takes, takes power. 
Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. I really want to thank you for joining us here. Matt, thank you as always. It's a pleasure.